So hello, I am here again and the question was, who cares? <laughs> it's Sunday and I'm driven. I'm driven. I believe I should be posting something. I believe I should be, um, in German the word would be, ich melde mich. Yeah, I, I'm, here I am. I'm just showing you my signs of life. And how many of you aren't? How many of you are not showing your signs of life? Well, now the, now the thoughts are coming. Now I've started. And now the thoughts come into my mind. What do I have to share with you? I didn't want to share anything because I thought, who cares? I don't have anything to say. I'm a retiree. I'm an old hag. Nobody's interested. Nobody responds to my stuff. So what does it matter? It matters. I just attended the Sunday service via Zoom. It was hybrid. My husband went into the center and I participated via Zoom. And the sermon was given by Renata Amersbauer, the Women's Federation President in Austria. And her topic was, someone is always at your side. Someone is always at your side. And I have to think how much I have felt that. I think about my father. I think about my grandparents. I knew both my grandmothers and my grandfather on my mother's side. And I even think beyond that to my other ancestors, to my grandfather who died when my father left Czechoslovakia, to my aunties who I met in Czechoslovakia. And I'm convinced that my children and future grandchildren will want to know what did I do and what was I like, where do they come from, simply because I want to know more about my own family and lineage. This week the thoughts that preoccupied me were property, <laughs> property, property, ownership. You know, in Australia, most people, I don't even know what the percentage is now, I couldn't tell you statistically, but a few years ago it was definitely 85% home ownership. And in my family, everybody owned their own home. And two of my brothers had built their own home. Twice. <laughs> and it was just a part of my upbringing, a part of my life. I just took it for granted. And I thought when I arrived in Austria that we would too own or build our own home and I spent a lot of time investigating property prices and we visited the um, build your own the home village uh, Blaue Lagoon it's called Blue Lagoon where they were sh um, displaying the kit homes that you could buy with the conviction that one day I would be a home owner of a kit home since that seemed to me I don't know, it wasn't initially. Initially, I, I really thought we could just build by our own house. And then I came to the conclusion that a kit home would be cheaper and more affordable. Somehow, the first 10, 20 years of my life in Austria, I had quite an attitude of deficiency. We were surviving. I was managing. I was the finance minister. We survived very well. Now I can see this can easily blow out into a very long presentation. And I started off not knowing what I wanted to say and thought, no, I have to post. And my motivation was, you have to post. You have to share about your life. And then when I started, I thought of some of the meetings that I attended this week. I checked out the generation, I didn't write about it, but it's connected with the CSW and it's from the title, I would not have thought, but it's youth, it's pivoting on youth. But the issue using the terminology generation. Now I have to find that terminology and maybe I'll write it in my blog. 
But, you know, as a retiree, I recognize that social media, the whole world is focusing on, on youth today. And again, I start to feel disadvantaged. Is that a bad thing? Well, actually, I'm driven and I believe in lifelong learning. So it's kept me on my toes. I have learned my way around social media. I'm not interested in TikTok and some of the other um, Snapchat and some of the other newer medium. But I am... And I'm still, I'm staying on Facebook and WhatsApp and Telegram and Signal. And I think I already talked about this. I'm staying there because these are all good tools that can be used for a good purpose. And my passion, my vision, my goal is a world where we can all use those resources for good. In other words, overcome greed and exploitation. And the only way to do that is by being in there. If I retreat from WhatsApp and Facebook because there's nothing interesting, nothing good, and only the bad people are using it, then I'm leaving it to the bad. So my conviction is we need to be in there. And this is what came out of the talk where I saw a lot of young people, really talented young people from Africa, from all around the world, young women and some transgender who were talking about how important it is to raise your voice. One was a 17-year-old girl, young woman, who was moderating this particular meeting. I guess if I find the link, I'll post that in my blog. And she was she spoke a bit fast as a toastmaster i would advise her to slow down a little bit but for the young people it's perfect you know you just talk and you just rattle on and you just say what you think and they're thinking along really fast i have to think of my mother who i haven't called for a long time because she doesn't even hear or understand what i'm saying when i call her now and even when i say something it takes her a while to understand what I'm saying, what I meant, and even to answer my question. She's recognizing that her brain has slowed down. She's 90, 93, and God bless her, I'm just grateful. My, cousin, my nephews have announced that there will be a Zoom meeting sometime soon. So I do hope that we catch up on that one soon. Another meeting, I don't believe it was this, inter this generational compact. It was this, uh, another meeting about women's leadership. Perhaps it was on LinkedIn. You can see I'm on a lot of platforms who, where a woman leader was advising women to make sure that at every meeting that they attended that their voice was heard in other words when there is a proposal something being recommended give your input it was related to political representation and constituency so if you are a representative make sure that you represent, that you have your say and represent your community. And whether it was in that meeting or another, so I can see it is important that I announce myself because I need to clarify where all these things come from. The message being, make sure that you do have your say and that you represent your community. And sometimes you will have your say and your constituents will come and say, hey, no, 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 we do not agree with that. We do not want to vote for it. We want to vote against it. But if you don't speak up and raise your voice, nobody will know. It will not get through. So this is about representation and interdependence. 
and working together. So whether intergenerational or international or interdenominational, I was at another great meeting this week sponsored by the Family Federation about interreligious dialogues. And I was fascinated and very moved and impressed by the caliber and quality of the speakers and the role that the Family Federation, the Unification Church in Austria took in bringing these experts together. It's 2021. I joined the Unification Church in 1975 in the midst or at the beginning or just before worldwide persecution of our movement where lots of people thought we were brainwashed zombies. And this meeting this week with such high caliber people who recognize the significance and the importance of inter-religious and interdenominational and international dialogue, interdependence, really, really moved me, really inspired me. So my message is, Tell your story. I just heard that the book of the German missionaries, 1975 German missionaries out into the world, is now available in German. I was asked to help with the translation into English and somehow slipped off that list. Yet I am very, very inspired and I know a number of those missionaries from 1975 and many of them are my colleagues here in Austria. Austria was a part of the German contingent of missionaries who went out into the world. So I made a little list before I started recording. Let me just go back in to see the Sunday service. There's always someone at your side, my blog, tell your story, who cares? Your descendants will want to know what you did and what you thought. The 1975 missionary book published in German. Okay, so the next questions are, what is my mission? What is my calling? And Bob Proctor. I, sorry, if I keep bumping the microphone, that makes a noise. But I hope at least you hear me better. I was not aware that my sound is so bad without these headphones. And somehow I'd like to talk without the headphones. So maybe I'll get a new external mic to put in front of me because I have overcome my uh, deficit thinking. I can do anything. I can have anything I want. If I can dream it, I can get it. I can do it. Bob Proctor gave me that conviction. More and more, more and more, as I listen to what Bob Proctor teaches and even watch many of the free YouTube videos, I hear him talk about universal principles that I absolutely believe and know to be true. He spent nine and a half years figuring out, finding, searching. And a video I watched this week talked about his search through the Bible, through the Old Testament, through the New Testament, through the Bhagavad Gita, through the Quran, through the Book of Mormon. He has talked about his search and his conviction and his mission. And some people think, ah, oh, he talks about how to earn a million dollars, how to be a millionaire, and it's all materialistic and all based on money. Vivian Posh, his inner circle consultant here in Austria, explains how money is just energy and Bob talks about everything being here and now. He talks about when he talks about this nine-year search that he went through looking for the truth and discovered that there is a religious truth, the theology seeks to respond to and a scientific truth. That's what I heard from Reverend Moon. So Reverend Moon came first into my life 
and I became a missionary in the Unification Church. And now I'm following Bob Proctor and teaching or learning, thinking into results. Hey, I have a lot of gurus. I have a lot of mentors. Todd Burrier, who is an amazing personal development trainer and also so much my mentor as well. When I also think of the supplements that I take and believe in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where do I go? I guess I need to make my list and follow what I really want to talk about and start scheduling my talks. You know, I've told you before, I do this to egg myself on, to motivate myself. I recognize only when I get up and do it that I need to do this, that I have a lot to share, that I want to share. And it would be high time for me to start making my list and scheduling my vlogs and blogs so that I can share with you more effectively. On that note, take up your pen, turn on your camera. Let your voice be heard. I want to hear about you. I want to know what you're doing. Especially unificationists who are encouraged to write and publish their life story and yet many, 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 many others. Every one of us is important, is significant. We are interdependent and we each have a story to tell. Please tell me your story. I, I would love to hear it. Have a great day.